also. Welcome back to our graphics area here at the heart of the BBC's American election program. Now, we started the evening by telling you about the Electoral College votes. We, we indicated some of the battleground states. These are the states that have been projected. That Not every single vote has been counted, but they got to a point where, for various technical reasons to do with the way the election is, is uh, reported both here and in the USA, we think we can, we can paint these states red and blue. And don't be put off by the, the, the volume of red. It's actually just that there are lots of states that, that are Republican that are much less populous than, say, the states right up here in the top right-hand corner of the map, those New England states that Hillary Clinton won. But here's the thing. This election began with some signs that were expected by broadcasters on all networks, which was that Hillary Clinton polling well, polling ahead, and early results look good for her in lots of places. And then something just seemed to get a bit stuck in that process. And, and it may be that there are unpollable parts of some states which are outside the cities or so-called ex-urban areas. They're, just, they're not suburbs, they're just beyond, where Trump is doing so well that he's threatening to overwhelm the Democratic vote. And that has, as I say, stuck the process in, in some of the states we were looking at waiting for defining moments. So to give you an example, Virginia, Ohio, Florida, by now we might have a very clear sign and we don't. So this is certainly one of the most exciting election programs I can ever remember either watching or being on. It, it may, well, it, it could be the most exciting because at the moment, at this point, there is no way of knowing who's going to win this. And I'm going to check with, with Jack who's researching. Is that, would that be what you'd say? Would you put it like that as well? Yeah, I'd say it's still marginally likely that Hillary will win, but we can see the map isn't really coming together for her at this point, and there's still kind of marginal, what we call marginal seats in the UK or here, swing states, where if Trump wins with that marginal vote, just two or three points, there is a map for him to hit that 270 number. And we're looking at numbers from places like Michigan, for example, uh, where rural voters seem to be turning out in really, really big numbers. Um, and they're accounting for... In the exit poll, 27% of the states vote, and Trump does exceptionally well with rural voters. So states like Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio, these kind of states that Democrats have thought have been in the bag since around 1988 could be in contention tonight, and that breaches Hillary's firewall. OK, breaching the, the Clinton firewall. Let's see. Um, Jack, Jack is going to stay on the computer there. If he gets stuff in while I'm talking, he will tell me. Uh, it's, it's rough and ready here, but that's Facebook and it's Facebook Live and we're ready with your questions. So let me just tell you what, what you're asking. A few comments as well. Milton says, go Clinton. Joe says Trump will win. We, 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 we don't know. We can't call it yet, that's for sure. Connor says it looks like Trump has won. Is that the case? No, definitely not. Not yet. Not saying he can't win. I'm saying we cannot say that yet. And here's why. We haven't got a battleground state come in yet for Trump. So all those juicy states that Obama won in 2012 and 2008, he hasn't yet won one of them, for real. So we haven't even projected him to win one. So let's hold our horses there. Muriel says, <laughs> not Muriel, sorry, Murat. Sorry, Murat. What is the difference between the two at the moment? Nothing. I'll tell you why I say that. On the ground, the voting will have, have been different. At the moment, we're still in exit poll and counting precincts. And, and one of the things that obviously is, is causing trouble here in working out the drift is that some areas are reporting very quickly. They may be pro-Clinton areas. So they send everyone chasing off thinking she's won the state. And then an area that, that historically hasn't played much role in the election may come in with a higher turnout for Trump, a more remote area. Rianne says, what's the latest with the counting? I hope, I hope we're going through that right now. Benjamin says, will Hillary win the Western coastal states? May struggle in Oregon, but... Or w would you say Washington or Oregon, which is the one she's most likely not to win? She'll probably take all of them, won't She'll she? Basically? All of them. Yeah. Oregon, in 2012, it took us around 20 minutes to call that state, yeah. just because it was so early. Um, but yeah, I imagine she'll sweep those states. Yeah, so, and so, so, so that's an extra 70, 80. Yeah, I mean, there, there are certain states where... If, if Trump won them, it would be really remarkable. I'm trying to think of, a, I mean, Colorado 
you wouldn't expect to go for Trump, would you? That that would be startling, wouldn't it? It's been it's been it's been relatively close in the polls. I think for me, I'm looking at places like Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin. That's where Speaker uh, Ryan's uh, home state. Places like that. I mean, Speaker Ryan was obviously on the ticket in 2012. Didn't manage to turn that state, but. You never know. These, these kind of Rust Belt states are looking in contention. Patricio asked the key question, what is the prediction for Florida? Florida down here, 29 Electoral College votes. Very, very important in elections. Very important, crucial, pivotal in the 2000 election, which George W. Bush just won from Al Gore. And, and I'll, I'll ask Jack for the very latest, but the, we can't call from it. Florida. We can't project it, can we? We can't project it at the moment. I'll just get up our latest tally. Did I see something saying Trump was slightly ahead on what we had? But that Yeah, is... so at the moment we've got 49.2% for Trump, 47.7% for Clinton. The gap is 4.5 million for Trump and 4.371 for Clinton. Now, so... if, but you could have a situation where you get areas around Miami coming in heavily for Clinton and they haven't come in yet. So does that, does that mean that could vary as we go through? Yeah, in places like Miami-Dade, for example, in the south of the state, 94% in. Um, so that's in, right. Yeah, uh, we're looking Jacksonville, 97% uh, in. Um, so it, a wriggle room now is looking quite, quite small, really. If you, all right, so, so if, if, what, what crucially Trump needs is to see those strongly democratic areas in Florida. And uh, Jack mentioned Miami-Dade, one of the counties around Miami, coming in, all of the votes coming in, and still him being in the lead. So when the strongest Hillary areas have reported and he's still leading, then it's game on, we, which is where we are now, right? Basically, we are in a situation where there is no way of choosing between these two. And there are some memories of Brexit here where, where do you remember Nigel Farage conceded very early and then unconceded. Barbie says, will the Republicans take the Senate? It's, it's really more, yeah, more about will they lose control of it. But what's, can we say anything about that, Jack, at this stage? I've got very strong uh, returns, essentially, that, yeah, they'll keep the Senate, basically. I think um, one of uh, the most famous sites, 538, now says there's 70% chance they'll keep the Senate. So that's looking quite good for them. And Alison says, what, what, what is the... the sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Oh, we've already called the House, obviously. The House of Representatives will remain under Republican control. OK. Alison says, what is the UK making of this? We're gripped because we... A, we have that rather close relationship with the USA. People listening to, to Taylor Swift and Bob Dylan here. And, and B, you know, the actual campaign has been extraordinary. And it's, it's a very, very important job. We're absolutely gripped. And I guarantee at this point... I know, I've got friends who set their alarm for 2 a.m. British time. So they thought they'd go to bed early. I said to them, get up at 2, you'll probably know the result by then. How wrong was I? So here we are at 2.30, just after British time, looking at the clock. And it's in the balance, and they've woken up, and they're, they're furious because they're now going to have to stay... Furious with me, because they're going to have to stay up all night. Sydney says it doesn't look like it's neck and neck at the moment uh, on, the, on the map. Yes, very good point. As we explained earlier, Sydney, that it's done by electoral college votes. Each state has a certain number of so-called electoral college votes. Some of them don't have that many, but take up a lot of space because it's to do with the population. If you take, if you win in the state, you take all the electoral college votes, and and essentially what you've got here is quite a lot of southern states which take up a lot of space: Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama. You can see there Tennessee, uh, Texas, obviously where I'm standing. That does have a lot of electoral college votes. But, but Republican states tend to be more roomy. So it, it's a little bit misleading on the map. You should see that the, the, the election that Romney lost four years ago was the, the whole, half the map was red, but he still lost it. Craig says, what will happen if Trump wins? Let's see. We'll, we'll, I guess the first thing is Hillary Clinton will concede. But yeah. after that, we, we, one of the key things about this race is we haven't really had a lot of policy discussion because there's been so much anchored on the personalities. Jessica coming in now. Isn't it strange so many states are red, but blue states can, I'm actually reading this as, as she types it, can swing it. Yes. And again, it comes back to the space taken up by, by the, the states won by Republicans. To give you an example, Montana, just up here, uh, not come in yet. It's, it's an awful. I've, I've been to Montana. It's beautiful. They call it big sky country. It's enormous. The thing that strikes you about Montana is the space and the beauty. And it's only three electoral college votes. Down here in California, they got 
38 million people living and it's 55 electoral college votes. So the actual size of the state is, is, is actually misleading in many, many ways. Uh, Bart Noss says, what are the numbers for the decided states? Now, we've got that somewhere on the wall. Current numbers, 130, 100, something like that. Yeah, we'll come back to you on that. Not, it'll flux around, so not, it's not particularly an issue at this moment, but I'm not fobbing you off. I will come back to that. With the uncolored states, what were they last time? What a good question. Well, broadly speaking, around here, uh, they were blue. I mean, up here, you've got, you've got Montana, which I mentioned was red. Wyoming was red. Um, you've got Idaho, uh, Idaho here. I'm going from my memory here of where they all went. Idaho, Utah, and Arizona were all red last time. Um, but down this side, you've got Nevada, California, Oregon, Washington, all blue last time. Over here, crucially, and these are, this is where it gets really interesting, in this Great Lakes area, that's Illinois, which has come in as blue or been projected as blue. Then you've got here, these were blue, um, Minnesota, Wisconsin. You're really testing me here. Then it's uh, Iowa, <laughs> Illinois. And then you've got an interesting one here where, let me just show you. I'll just, just before you change the map, this one here um, is Michigan. That was blue, actually, and then Indiana just below it has uh, been projected as red. So anyway, the answer is that pretty much it's steady as she goes at this moment. We've got the old map. I'll bring in the old map. Let's see the old map. And you can see the way they were. There we are. So that was the result of the last election. So you see how, yeah, where we are now and where we were last time. OK. Charlotte says hi from Malaysia. Hi, Charlotte. Francesco says, is California key? Not really, and here's why. It's almost already in the blue column. We can count it as, as Democrat California because it is, it is a, a completely unlikely. You almost would say impossible to go red. And there's certainly no polling to, ev to evidence that. So although it's got the most electoral college votes, and although it's occasionally in the past taken winning presidents over the line, um, it's, it's, it's not one people focus on because it's almost a banker. Um, let's see. Zaki says, what about Ohio? We, we are really fascinated by Ohio. Ohio is predominantly white. White voters tend, if they're non-college educated, particularly if they're outside cities, tend to favor Trump. So the, there, it's now electrifying Ohio because we, we really are wondering whether Trump has so supercharged his core that he will take the state. Am I standing on Texas? No. I'm, if I was, I'm sorry. Somebody earlier said I was standing on their house. Imelda says, will this be like Brexit? It, I'll, I'll say I'll probably have to eat my words in an hour. At this precise moment, British time 2.39, it feels a bit like Brexit. It feels a bit like everybody thought it was going one way and then suddenly something happens and they stop and the whole system jams for about an hour and then suddenly it races the other way. It hasn't started racing the other way yet, though. That's the crucial thing. We're just in this moment where we've stopped and thought, this is not a done deal. A couple of minutes left. Is it right, says Jamie, that central states are not that important? They take up room, but they're not that key. Well, what you, that I always think this band of six here, you almost put them as red. So it's, it's North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, where my left foot is, and then Texas. Those six states, you almost write them as red straight away. So if, if that's what you mean, I guess, yeah, of course they're important, they play a role, just not in contention at this point in the 21st century. They may be in contention again at some point. Who is leading, says James. That's the $64 million question. The answer is we don't know. Uh, Nigel says, when will Florida, when do, you, when, when do you think Florida will come in? So we are 95% of precincts in now. So I would say probably a projection in the next hour, but we will wait for the American networks before the BBC makes that call. OK, I think we've pretty much Shelley from Canada says there's a lot of red. Yeah, again, don't worry too much about the, the scale of the red. That's that's at this point, not the issue. Laurie says, what about the minority vote? Well, the one of the reasons that it was thought that Hillary Clinton would win 
by a lot of people is the same reason that Barack Obama won so convincingly last two elections. And that is that the America's changing, it used to be 80% white, it's now about 62% white. And, and particularly Hispanics in some cities are, are trebling, quadrupling in number, even over the period of 10 to 15 years. And because of that, Democrats have got a lot more firepower in places they didn't used to have. Florida used to be much more Republican as a state. And the answer from what we see is that Latinos, Hispanics, black Americans are coming out very strongly for Hillary Clinton. The question, if she hasn't won, it'll be because Trump has absolutely corralled all of the, of the, the white, non-college educated, rural vote, older vote, and brought it onto his side. That's the big question at the heart of this. I think we'll say goodbye now. I hope you've enjoyed that. Just, it's, it's, it's the most amazing moment in this election. Jack, thank you. thank you. Anything more to say at this point? I will say while we've been um, doing this, Trump's lead is now down to a percentage point in Virginia with 82% of the vote reporting. Um, that's not enough votes. Um, so sorry, that, so, so that is interesting because it was a five point lead for Trump when he started. And there's lots of areas for Clinton still to come in. So Virginia is still very much in contention. All right, Virginia used to be solidly Republican, then changed to Democrat. And uh, it, it would be quite a shock, actually, if Trump got Virginia. It would be maybe the start of something big for him. There we go, Facebook Live from inside the BBC election studio on American election night. So fascinating. Thank you for your company and your questions. All the best.